is what we have at the moment. The ANC reduced to just over 40% of the vote and, in a sense, compelled to go into a government of national unity or compelled to see a government of national unity as its best option. Is this the end of the ANC or the beginning of the end of the end for the ANC? Somebody who's thought a lot about these things, liberation movements and how long they last and studied them, is Roger Southall, Emeritus Professor in Sociology at the University of Witwatersrand. Roger, good afternoon. Good afternoon. The ANC, I think, sees this as the springboard to further renew, further strengthen and gain back the votes it lost in the elections of last month. Is that how you see it? Uh, Well, yes and no. I think that there's certainly uh, key players in the ANC, probably the ones in control of the ANC at the moment, um, who think that is a a possibility and a, a way to take the ANC forward. But, uh, but we all know that the ANC is, uh, as the ANC says itself, a broad church. It's got lots of different elements within it. And there are certainly those within the ANC who would rather go in a different direction. So uh, we're, we're in an interesting moment. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, there are people within EFF and MK, whether they are thinking after having had conversations or they just thinking along roughly similar parallel tracks that they would like to to fold themselves back into the ANC or fold the ANC into them and then claim to be the true ANC. But that, to me anyway, as, uh, as an interested observer, seems less likely even. Yes, I think it's... I, 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 I think that all players have been wary in the past of being the individuals or the element who can be accused by history of breaking up the ANC. There's going to be a big struggle in the future about who can own the legacy of the ANC, who can own the name of the ANC, uh, let alone the bits of property which might be attached to it. So I think we're going to see that struggle play out. And at the moment, we're seeing that play out in terms of the one, the Ramaphos, the Ramaphosa faction of the ANC, creating a GNU with the possibilities in the future of either basically eroding the support for the DA or simply absorbing it into the ANC itself, which is one possibility. Um, and the other possibility is what the uh, some players are calling a pot- potentially progressive. Uh, unite reuniting of the EFF and the MK with elements in the ANC. But who owns the name of the ANC? Whose property it's going to be? That you know that that's going to be a, a, a key aspect of the struggle to come. And we need to redefine the word progressive. If um, Mkonto is where party and Al Jamaa are part of a progressive caucus, we, we have to rethink completely. Yeah, we do indeed. Means. Yeah. And and Roger, what do you think the the chances are, if not in twenty twenty nine, then perhaps in twenty thirty four, of the ANC existing only as an historical formation of a party of the centre? replacing the ANC and the DA and perhaps some of the smaller odds and sods that are around at the moment? Yeah, well, we're looking far ahead. And I mean, I rather suspect I won't be alive by the time (laughs) whatever I say is proved wrong or right, more probably proved to be wrong. Um, But I certainly think if you look at the trajectory of, I mean, I, I think the, you know, the closest analogy we're looking at is, is Kenneth Kawanda's unit party in uh, in Zambia, which put itself up for a democratic election in uh, what was it, 19, uh, if my memory serves correctly, 1989, uh, lost it and simply disappeared into other parties. And you could look at Kanu in Kenya and so forth. Um, there is always the danger that a liberation movement which loses an election eventually disappears. And I think the ANC is very aware of that. So I think, um, you know, the present incumbents are trying to put defences in in place for the moment. But there's simply no guarantee. And at the moment, we're facing a very uh, very uncertain future. So how it's going to play out, we don't know. But I think one of the things we must recognise is that we're in a country with huge uh, social dislocations are in place. We have an 
a, a, a what Boris Johnson would call a world-beating unemployment problem. Um, and I suspect there's rather little prospect of any government of national unity making a serious inroad to that. So a lot of people are going to be alienated from the political system in the future. So there's going to be a lot of room for the day, for the um, Donald Trumps, the Nigel Farages, the Jacob Zumas of this world to play mayhem in the future. I hope you are wrong on that, and I hope to be able to hold you account for account to account for it on the radio. Roger, you'll be lucky. Yes. You'll be dead lucky. Roger Southall, Emeritus Professor, Sociology, University of the Witwatersrand.